Here's another great garden bench idea that will give you years of enjoyment. As always, it's a very customizable plan with plenty of room for your personal touches. The back is slanted for comfort and has a graceful set of curves along the top. The seat is hinged and covers a hidden storage area. The original plans refer to this as a garden hose storage bench, but I think it's perfect for things like tools or potting soil, maybe even spare pots. This whole project is based around 1x6 pressure treated southern pine. Now I've adjusted the original measurements just a smidge, so if you build your bench with the same measurements that we've got here today, you should be able to get the entire project done with four 10 foot lengths of 1x6. Cut two lengths of 1x6 at 32 inches and two more at 16 inches long. Next, set the table saw to 3 and an eighth and rip all four pieces you just cut. Okay, at this stage you should have four matched sets of legs, or at least the parts that make up each leg. You want to find the pretty sides, because we're going to attach them like this to make something of an L, if you will. Once we uh, find the pretty sides of our wood, we're going to get out the glue and some clamps and put them all together. Spread glue evenly along the edge of the narrow strip. Use clamps to hold the setups in position. The leg blank should measure three and an eighth inches on both sides. While the glue is setting up, let's put the seat together. Cut three sections of one by six to 35 and a half inches long. All right, now we have our three seat planks cut. We wanna make sure we decide which side goes up, obviously. Now, aside from the fact that we want the prettier side up, also wanna pay attention to that end grain, because if you have that C pattern on the end grain, you want that C facing down, so that if, when this wood decides to move, if it cups, it cups downward and not upward, because then we would have a dog watering dish and not so much a bench. Great for pets, bad for benches. This step is optional, but I like to use a roundover bit on projects like this to help keep splintering to a minimum along the edges. Plus, those rounded edges just feel better to the touch. The seat planks are held in place with one by two cleats. They're 11 and a half inches long, and you can rip them from a scrap of one by six. But first, the next step is to lay all of your seat boards face down on your work table. Now, when I say face down, that's actually the part that you would be sitting on. So technically it's upside down, got it? Next, we're gonna clamp them together with these long clamps just so they stay in position. And once we've got that done, we'll measure from the back of the seat an inch and a half. And then we'll measure from each side four and a half inches. That will give us the location for both of the cleats. Mark the locations for the screws in a staggered pattern along the length of the cleat. Then drill pilot holes at each mark. Use glue and screws to secure the cleats to the planks and set the seat assembly aside to dry. Now the plans call for the bench to be 46 inches long, but I made this one shorter to fit in a smaller space. By cutting the front and rear pieces to 34 inches, this bench came out to be 35 and a half inches wide total. At this point, if you're going to paint these pieces, go ahead and do that now before we assemble it. This makes it a little bit easier. Here's one of the pieces we'll be making. Gone ahead and primed it. The second thing we'll be doing is attaching the strip along the bottom of all of the lower pieces. This is to uh, provide an attachment point for the hardware cloth that we're going to line the bottom of the uh, bench with. That will allow for drainage if we decide to go ahead and store a hose in there. For the long sides, measure back from each end three quarters of an inch to allow clearance for the short sides. Then cut a length of one by two and use glue and nails or screws to fasten it flush along the bottom edge. For the short side, measure back from each end to allow room for the long side and its attached strip. Then repeat the cutting and gluing process for each of the short pieces. While the uh, glue is setting up on those bottom sections, let's go ahead and work on the back. Now the back is made up of two pieces, both 35 and a half inches long, and I've chosen a couple of pieces that have an interesting grain pattern to them, just to, you know, this is kind of a, a nice design detail. This is also a great time to find a board with a little warp to it, because that will actually make the seat back a little bit more comfortable. So if you can uh, find a couple of warped boards, that's even better for you. Now to create that double arch along the back, we've uh, just uh, made a couple of measurements here. The first is a center line along the upper board. Then make a mark at two and three quarter inches measuring up from the bottom of the board. Do the same thing at each end and use those as reference marks for a bender board to draw the curves. 
Use a jigsaw to rough cut just outside the lines. Next, an orbital sander will give you a smooth finish along the top edge. Finally, if you choose, use the roundover bit once again to soften the edges of both boards. Since we have the jigsaw and the router out, let's come full circle and head back to the legs. The legs should be positioned so that the seam is on the side and the full width boards face front and back. Use a quart paint can to draw a curve along the outside edge of each. Use the jigsaw to cut and the sander to smooth off the rough spots. The back legs have an extra step. Aside from the curve that matches the front legs, we need to measure and cut the angle for the backrest. Measure an inch and three quarters from the back and 15 inches down along the front edge. Draw a line and trim this section off with a saw. All right, now it's time to attach our backrest pieces, that would be one and two, to the rear legs. And take a look at our finished piece here. You can see what we're using to align everything. Where the curve begins on the back, that's what we're aligning with the top of the rear leg. So that's our starting point. We'll obviously want to do that on both sides. We're going to use glue and uh, either nails or decorative fasteners. It's up to you. I just used a pencil to space the two sections, uh, but be sure during this entire process to make sure the legs stay parallel to each other. That's very important. Next, measure up 16 inches from the bottom of the rear legs and attach the rear sections of the bench using screws on the inside. Leave roughly a half an inch or so between the panels. The front section assembles quickly. Just make sure the upper panel is aligned with the top of the legs. Next, attach the four short side panels using only one screw each. Now, this will allow the panel to move slightly while we're aligning the sections. All right, this is where things start coming together, literally. We're gonna match up the back section with the sides and the front. Now, this is why we left those extra screws out because now we have some wiggle room. These are very adjustable up and down as far as that's concerned, we've got a little bit of room in there. So we can line everything up, all of the boards will line up with each other, then we'll get inside here and put the uh, rest of the screws in, and then move on to the next step. Align the sides with the back section and install at least two screws in each panel. Be sure to install the remaining screws that we left out in the last step as well. Now once the sides are attached, cut a piece of hardware cloth to fit inside the bench. You can staple it in place or use strips of wood on top of the wire to hold it against the bottom lip. This is more secure and I'd advise this method, especially if you're putting pots or other breakable pieces inside. Okay, now that our mesh is in place, I've cut a strip of wood to fit right between the two rear legs. This will be our hinge point for the seat. So all we have to do at this point is get our piano hinge and attach it to the strip and the seat. We're almost done. Measure and mark the center line of both the seat and the anchor strip. Begin installing the piano hinge on the strip, centering it and installing the tiny screws at least every few inches. Now this gets old real quick, so be patient with these screws to avoid stripping the heads. Then attach the hinge to the seat, again aligning the center points. That about does it. I've secured this strip to the bench itself with three screws across the back. Now our seat hinges up and down. Perfect, huh? Oh, one more thing you may want to consider doing is putting a little hook and eye here on the side to keep the seat in an upright position. Then again, you may prefer the seat stay down all the time, but that's a totally different discussion for another day. You have a great time with this project. Remember realoutdoorliving.com for great workshop projects using wood. It's real.